Hello, Sarah. Hello. Contessa. Hello. Thank you for joining. Thank you very much for your time. It's such a pleasure. <laughs> um, actually, before we met personally, I was here at your place and um, I was quite impressed. And then I asked about the interior designer, the Contessa. Then I told uh, Manfredo, what a nice etiquette, the Contessa. And so on and on <laughs> and on. And I met the enologist and I said, yeah, you want some prices? And he said, yes, the Contessa is very interested. So you were all over. So I met you over first yeah. and got very interested. So all your books and books and books. And then the most amazing and impressive thing was this post you made on Facebook when you were married 10 years, you remember? Oh yes, I remember, yeah. And then I was there and I thought, incredible. Because you made such a statement, I thought you have to be such a strong personality to be able to do that. And then we met Manfredo and I said, she is so creative and everything. And he said, yeah, she worked in finance and she studied economics. And I thought, oh my God, <laughs> <laughs> that's the top of it all. So yeah. I'm very pleased that you're here. Thank you. And um, then you did this great move from England to Italy. Yeah being tall, blonde and intelligent, very courageous, <laughs> moving in this entire way. Lots of courage required. Yes, yeah. lots of courage required. So the question is, um, why do you think you are so, I say successful, but it's not only successful, why you are able uh, to move in such different fields and to move forward, what drives you? Yeah, yeah, gosh, <laughs> quite a difficult question. Um, I mean, when I look back at different projects and stages of my life, I think that um, it's probably a very similar mix of ingredients. Terror, usually, there's quite a bit of fear. Um, a lot of passion, lots of emotion. Um, and I think just diving headlong into those things which you feel very strongly about helps you, um, I don't know, helps you with the momentum, helps you with the results. Yeah. And I think you, you probably understand that better than anyone. But uh, well, I think whatever I have pursued, um, I'm probably trying to attain some level of perfection, mm. never get there. And it's a constant frustration, but um, there's probably no difference between the way I approached my first career versus this second one. Um, but the creativity, I think, in the background has always been there. Um, and probably the thing which presses most of my buttons um, the thing that makes me feel, it's the bit that transports me. You know, that's where I forget everything when I'm in that really truly creative place. Um, my role, I think, you know, historically in finance and banking was predominantly about people, you know, and being sort of eternally interested in um, different types of people, you know, the. And, and that certainly, I think, made me successful at that part of yeah. uh, my, my role. But now um, I think I live a lot quiet, a quieter life mm -hmm. and uh, much closer to nature, which makes me very happy. Um, but that was all part of the transition because um, we found this place yep. many years ago while I was still working and it became a complete solace and counterbalance to life mm. in a city like London. So this is your place now where you feel at home? 
I think it's probably the closest version of, uh, well, a close to kind of home and nature, mm. uh, the combination of the two. It's probably as close as I've as I've got to. I can still imagine versions of this, other versions of this, where we could get a little closer. Yep. Um, to that, and uh, and you know, in some of our future projects, yeah. we're going to think about that, and we're working on that. But um, everything you know f in this in this world that we've created is trying to create the beauty inside, which doesn't take away from the beauty outside. Um, mm. Nature's done something infinitely per perfect out there. <laughs> yeah. So we're just trying not to screw it up in here. Um, but that's just one element, you know, our surroundings, our, the rooms we sleep in, the, the rooms we sit in and share time with each other, with families, etc. It's It goes, that whole ethos goes into everything, you know, whether it's the glass we're drinking from or uh, the wines we're making or the food we're eating. So it's, um, it's sort of endless mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, a, a project of many different passions. And uh, you, from the very beginning, you were very much interested in sustainability. Yeah. In uh, bringing back wood and yeah. all the old old materials. Yeah. And the project you have is also in wood, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Um, I was a bit frustrated with, you know, there's many places, beautiful places here in Italy. Mm. And we just don't have that blessing in England, you know, where this is a, a very unique combination is why Italy is loved the world over. But I was a bit frustrated that there were things that they did with the wood and the stone that they were covering the woods, they were yeah. covering the stones, you know, things were darker, there wasn't that much light. Um, you know, understanding having natural linens around you, cottons, you know, mm. that's how we want to live. We want to feel close to these natural materials. Yeah. Um, I, the ideal thing is to walk outside barefoot in the grass. That's that's the ultimate thing yes. and then when we come in here we want to touch we want to feel we want to be close to the materials from the outside so anything that we're thinking about doing really in the future is just to try to keep the space between us and nature as minimal as possible mm -hmm. and um, and just to feel that the whole space is flowing um, between the trees the sounds of the birds you know I think as I'm getting older, bird song is becoming increasingly important. And so being able to have access to immediate access to and have the trees as close as possible is so important. But sure, when we first came to this place, we were very lucky because it was a it was a completely organic farm. So no yeah. pesticides had been used ever. So um, instead of having to go through what I think is something like a seven year transformation where mm -hmm. you have to leave off the land and yeah. stop using the pesticide until it becomes organic. This was already a very natural place. And so we were very lucky. So um, the influence of nature is very clear. And um, being very creative, you have some influence from artists or art itself. Mm you feel that more in Italy than in England? Um, I don't know if this particular place mm. um, here in Tuscany, this Maremma, which already is, you know, viewed by Italians as the kind of wild west of yeah. Tuscany, is unique, you mm. know, I think both in Italy and obviously, you know, from, from, because obviously England, the rest of Italy has so many beautiful places. But, you know, there's something 
very special about the Maremma, and I think that something changed in me when I first came here. Really? You know, I think I was very happy with an urban life. You know, I'd, I'd grown up in the countryside. I'd moved to London, studied, been to university, started work. I didn't think about anything else. Mm. Um, and, and then I came here and I realized I was missing something very profound. Yeah. I think I've told you before that I had this urge to literally lie on the ground yep. here. And I, I, I mean, I was a girl that was that had grown up and had been working in the city for a long time and we don't even have windows in those banks. Um, but this sustained me then for the next 10 years mm. of my job there. And then it, the, the, the pull of this place was too much. You know, we had to, we had to move. Yeah, perhaps. I feel it too, because we come back every year twice at yeah. least and go home really happy. Yeah. It's really a special place. Yeah. I don't know what it is exactly. Yeah. Because uh, in the Marema you have other places. Yeah. Not just like this, but similar. But there's not this relaxing happiness. It's yeah. really, it attracts. Yeah. I mean, so many times people arrive and, you know, I, I understand them perfectly. They're stressed out, they've traveled. It's, you know, they come from a very frenetic life and nothing is quite right. And they arrive in this and I see them 24 hours later and mm -hmm. they're completely different people. Mm -hmm. They calm down. Yeah. They arrive criticizing and yeah. nervous and everything. And yeah, which is our life, you know. We, you know, we're terrified that everything isn't going to be as we want it to be. Mm. I'm exactly the same. Um, but nature does its work and you walk around and somewhere, you know, there's, you know, the nature just brings you the happiness. I don't, I don't know either. They, they say there's some longitude and latitude lines which cross just over there. Yeah. Um, which mean all sorts of things for fertility and health mm -hmm. and um, well-being. Um, so I don't know so much about that factually, but we're feeling it. Yeah, I, I'm convinced too. Yeah. So uh, we talked about your professional life and your complete change yeah. of life. But we should not forget you have a family, you have three sons. Yeah. And that's like a third profession, yeah. I would say, from yeah. outside. Yeah. So. Yeah, probably uh, has to be my first one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. first choice. Yeah. So um, I met your sons and we talked a little bit about it, that um, the most important you want to give them. You can tell us again. Yeah. It's so nice. Yeah, yeah. So for sure, I mean, you know, family is everything. It's at the center yeah. of everything. and. Uh, everything that both myself and Manfredo do is centered around that, which I suppose makes for a happy marriage. Um, the children, you know, take all of our, you know, focus in terms of that's my, that's, that's my honorable role. You know, what, what can I do that produces three boys that, you know, are going to be happy and confident mm. and alive and able to you know, go forward from here and have a great life. And um, I don't know, they've all grown up here. You know, the first thing I did was a maternity leave when the house was barely finished, no furniture. I brought Vinci Guerra here mm -hmm. and uh, we were here for the full six months, practically alone. And it was magical, totally magical. And um, we try to teach them, you know, there's everything, you know, there's the history and of Manfredo's family, but also, you know, my more modest uh, upbringing has probably some of the most important lessons for them as, as young men. So mm. I'm very happy to try to insert some of those messages from time to time. But yeah, it's a um, big responsibility having three sons. Yes. Yeah. So I... If you talk to, these are your sons and you know them, but if you would 
have to give an advice for young people, for example, in yeah. general, yeah. or also people middle age, because you can always change. I yeah. believe in change. Absolutely, you can do it. Yeah. Um, what would be your advice? Yeah. I think that, uh, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm always reminding them, I'm looking for certain values in them, which, you know, mm. if they're falling short, I do forgive. But, you know, I do want to see, I want to see three hardworking boys achieving, you know, the best that they can. Mm -hmm. um, you know, shortcuts and laziness and, you know, the basics, really, of a, of a good working class girl. Um, unacceptable so you know there's a there's a very disciplined side of me um, which I try to pass on to them um, and I you know I, I see in each of them you know some grand passions and that makes me very proud um, but I you know I think you know to work hard there's no there's there's no substituting hard work and yeah. you know I think in the people that I've met through my life and, and I, if I think about the small successes I, I've had personally, you know, all of it's come from very, very hard work and a yeah. lot of determination. Um, I just hope that we have given them, you know, enough security that they feel that they can fail and then finally succeed. But the failing is so important. You know, we don't want to save our children from the disappointments that we've had and that give us the characters that we've got today. Mm. And disappointments are given. They totally. They arrive. You yeah. cannot change it. And then uh, if you have this uh, good feeling in yourself and your security, you just carry on. Yeah. Finished. Yeah. And nothing's perfect and, you know, I personally, you know, every time there's a new project or there's, you know, something else, maybe there's a higher level of risk to take or, you know, it's, uh, it's accompanied with significant fear. Mm. And I see that in my children and I see, uh, I, see, you know, I see the kind of behaviors that come from that. And, you know, it's teaching children to, you know, to manage that fear, to know that, you know, you work through it. Mm. You know, you become competent, you become better at what you do and you, over you overcome. Yeah. Um, I love, I do love the, these, uh, these talks that are going on right now where they're saying that grit is one of the most important things. And this concept of grit, which is a little bit difficult to explain sometimes, you know, it is really that ability to, to, to suffer and move on mm. and not to hide too much from that. That we'll, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll go through, yeah. and you'll come out in a better place. Uh, that's interesting that you mentioned this grit because I read an article about um, talented children, and they made a follow-up study, and they could tell who will succeed and who not, and the ones they had no grit can be talented twice as much yeah. as the others. It doesn't help. Yeah, that's It so doesn't true. help. It's, it's the grit to continue to just accept the failures, but move on. Absolutely. And it's so important. So we were just talking about your children. And do you have, a, if you could model the ideal world, or if you could tell me what's your utopia? Yeah. If it, we can talk, yeah, an utopia. <laughs> yeah, reality is other, but we can think about it, having visions. Yeah. I mean, I think it's uh, it's a world where you know I'm really so, you know closely connected, emotionally connected, you know, with family and close friends, um, and I think that structure is just you know, at the center of everything. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, that, you know, we're living with the values that have now become so important, you know, living with this nature and eating food, which represents, you know, the most natural foods we can mm. find, um, 
that everything we're doing is with passion and care mm. and you know with a little bit of patience as well I mean I I tried to tell <laughs> there's a couple of members of my family that when we're eating together they eat very very quickly and then there's some of us that don't eat quickly and I was trying to explain that I'd heard this guru the other day saying that just remembering to feel grateful mm. before you start to eat mm. is can change everything with your metabolism your body you the way mm. your body thinks about the food etc and um, so it's less about what we're eating although here in Italy we're blessed because most of what we you know comes in front of us is wonderful and yeah beautiful and created by some wonderful and artisans tasty. somewhere yeah um, but it's you know how we treat the food that we're about to put yeah. into our bodies so I am trying to um, pass some of that on to my children to my family um, but I do think you know the utopia part of this comes back to very simple things you know how we live where we live how close we are to this green stuff all around us how we feel connected, you know, to the rhythms of nature. Um, and then um, as individuals, you know, that we pursue these passions that we have, you know, with a, hopefully some good ethics, with some values, with some something that we can be proud of later. Yeah, so um, being married to Manfredo, who is a descendant of a very old, family it's even putting not pressure but you in your surroundings you're sort of a role model for the others because I think it's even nowadays special to be a Conte and a Contessa mm. and I felt it in here in these rural surroundings that people just have sort of a respect yeah. Because they know that you are, you give them jobs, okay, mm. but you live a life they can see the values in there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think this is very important also for you as a couple. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, you know, it can sound quite complicated. It can get very complicated when we think of these old families, etc. For me, you know, it's it's very very simple. Um, we need to represent certain values of decency. Yeah. Yes. And you know, one of the things which I've always said to the children is that they need to operate with a level of humility. Yeah and respect yeah. and um, you know that message is being repeated over and over again and I think if we can do that operate at a level of humility and respect I think I think you know we've probably won mm -hmm. you know just just there yeah. because you know many of the people who are working here for example have worked um, with us for us I worked here for many many years mm -hmm. Some of them, you know, for more than 20 years. And they were very hard. And, you know, just getting my children's head around, you know, what they're doing every day and the respect that they have for their job, for their life, for their family, etc., is, you know, that's enough. So lots and lots of role models for my children right inside, you know, this farm, this winery, um, a very, very dedicated, decent people that um, have worked very hard for us and have been very loyal. So, you know, I think, you know, that for me is, it's almost enough. Um, but sure, there's, um, I suppose there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a broader respect required, you know, that, you know, we need to set an example. But I see examples every day, Vera, of, you know, people who've worked for us for a long time have maybe had a really tough life 
And, you know, one young woman just thanked me this morning and said, you know, um, I've, I've actually managed to buy my first house and, <laughs> um, for her and her son. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and, you know, it's because of, you know, my career here and everything else. But to see that and, um, and particularly see that in a woman that's a single parent or, you know, has mm. had a really tough time you know, with her little family. That's amazing for me, amazing. Yeah, and obviously we come here for many years now and as the stuff is not changing, mm. it's first a good sign. And what I realized that um, several of your employees, young women, they dared to divorce. Really? He's so happy about it. Yeah, I, I so congratulated them. So do I. Yeah, but I think it's also because they can follow another um, image of women in you. Yeah. And yeah. they see, oh, it's possible. Yeah. And the one girl I met today, she lost 10 kilos of weight. She divorced and she has her little girl and you allow her also to bring it here. Yeah. I saw her in the evening when she worked, she brought her little girl, she was sitting here. That's an environment you yeah. cannot have elsewhere. No, and I feel very passionate about that. And, you know, I think, you know, that was a part of my life in finance where it was a world of, zero compromise you know there was no flexibility at all and mm. my family had to fade into the background for me to reflect really a predominantly male environment you know I needed to be present in that workplace more than anybody else mm. and lead by example um, there was no space for my children in that mm. there was there was no space for that part of me um, and I think, so being here and being able to create a working environment mm -hmm. which is more real, more authentic, because life doesn't happen without women, children, <laughs> children being sick, you know, not being able to make it into work, etc. You know, these are, these are the facts of life for us. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, hopefully they see uh, a workplace and a, I mean, God knows we spend a huge amount of time working. You know, let's hope it's with people that understand, you know, the challenges of our personal lives. So definitely, you know, I, I don't think I had that luxury historically um, in, in banking to do that. But being an entrepreneur and being able to create an environment of people around me that I like to look at makes it so much easier. Yeah, and and it functions. I I have to prove. I have seen these yeah. girls. I hope so. Yes. Yeah, and it's really amazing. It's exciting to see yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, I it's think so exciting. too. And I'm a big believer in, you know, a stable family life, and you know, um, you know, I want. I'm very dedicated to my own family, my husband, etc. But if a woman is in difficulty because their husband isn't treating them properly or, you know, there are issues, they need to leave them. And, yes, that's what, yeah, you know, and that's it's, 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 true. It's making sure that they have a choice, and yeah, that and they, they feel that they have other options. Yeah, and I, th I think one girl once said also, yeah, I have the security of this job. So you transmit the feeling of fairness yeah. and they dare walking away because if they have not the security of her income herself absolutely they have to stay yeah I see the point yeah. when you have a little girl you you cannot just walk out without any money yeah so you just project this feeling of security totally. on them definitely and you know this is something that I see in you which I admire greatly which is this you take responsibility, you know, for everything yourself. Yeah, you and, have to. and I think as a woman, unfortunately, we're brought up with a lot of uh, 
crazy images. Weird ideas. <laughs> that were going to be rescued and saved and yeah. carried away and... The prince exactly. on the white horse. And uh, unfortunately it doesn't exist. Fortunately, it doesn't exist. <laughs> and we have to relearn those uh, fairy tales. Save ourselves. Save ourselves. Save ourselves. Yeah. And, you know, I, 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 you know, I've said a lot of this to my uh, nieces this summer, that nobody's coming to save us. So mm -mm. let's spend all of our time building up, you know, our own internal powers so that we can take care of ourselves and our children. And, you know, the, one of the first things of that is to make sure that you're working hard, you've got your job, mm. and you have your financial security, and mm. then you can perform miracles. But without that, I think it's very hard. Yeah, you have illusions, and then they and fade. dependencies. Yeah, dependency is the worst, I think. Yeah, totally. It's really the worst. So, totally. hearing you talking, I do not even ask about the role model, because... <laughs> There is none. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's not that. I mean, there's been so many people that I have learned from. Yeah. So many and am amazing, you know, teachers, uh, mentors, bosses, um, clients mm. that I've met over the years who have really been an inspiration. And um, I'm, I'm a collector. A collector yeah. of people. Of pieces. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but uh, but there's no doubt that we learn our lessons as well, you know, from in other ways, you know. I mean, there's been some books which have turned my life around. Really? Absolutely. Um, and uh, and has given me the courage to, you know, to make big decisions. Um, and then sometimes, you know, absolute inspiration comes from just being out there and and walking in the trees and um, and and actually just listening to your your gut. Yep, and absolutely. I feel more in touch with that, I think, than ever before. And have the courage to listen. You hear it, and then to do the right moves. Yeah, because you can listen, and when you know do not take actions, Yeah, you are always, you get stuck. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's also, I think that's a lesson of nature that you really listen yeah. to yourself or to nature or whatever. So um, talking of women, we are waiting to your first chef cook. <laughs> that's also a field very interesting. Yeah. I mean, these um, Armando and Alessandra who have arrived here, I am loving this combination. Mm. I mean, not only are they both very talented, I mean, he is, uh, he's the chef and she is a pastry chef yes. by discipline, but just the caliber of their characters hits you almost immediately. I mean, when they first arrived, you know, I walked into the kitchen and Alessandra was half inside one of the aluminium cupboards, cleaning and scrubbing and organizing and moving. And she wanted, they wanted that kitchen as clean as a new pin. That for me is the best start possible. And uh, it's just been glorious, you know, watching them create amazing dishes, plates, and also treating the resources so carefully. You know, mm -hmm. they don't want to waste anything and they're really careful and they're very thoughtful about the season and, you know, the ingredients. And for me, that's because you're always looking for a reflection of the emotions that you get from mm. this environment here in Tuscany um, and unfortunately you'll have a lot of chefs that want to come and be a Michelin starred chef and so they'll bring something from London or Rome, anywhere else. Yeah. Um, whereas really I want the inspiration to come from here and uh, so that everything that you experience here whether it's food or wine or 
or your experiences outside, um, you know, feel very authentic and grounded. But they are um, achieving miracles. Really? I hope you agree. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we, we had one meal here and it was great. Yeah. And we had some spare meat and he asked us if it would be okay to make another dish with this meat today. Oh, yeah, exactly. That's, That's perfect. perfect. Yeah. No waste. Exactly. Ah, it's perfect. Yeah, exactly. That's what we want. Yeah. Do you have any questions you think everybody should ask himself once? Asking about his life or what should be doubted about? Yeah. I mean, I'm always, <laughs> I'm always <laughs> checking, I'm always asking I myself. <laughs> I know. It's, uh, it's definitely not a done deal, is it? I mean, I think I'm always asking, am I really doing what is making me happy? Am I living in the right place? Am I, am I, am I living, you know, that authentic space? Am mm. I? Am I? Um, and of course, you know, we're never, we're never um, absolutely on point because we have to make compromises. And, you know, whether it's my children's education of or of it's, course. you know, it's projects that we have to work on or we have to be out of town or we, you know, we have commitments to family, etc. It's, um, life is messy, very messy. Um, but I think it's this idea of always coming back to to authentic spaces uh, where you feel happy yeah, yeah. so that you can go out and get on with the rest um so i don't know i i my advice my 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 thought is you know keep checking keep checking keep asking yeah because uh, there's certainly there's been periods in my life where um i haven't done that and i've ended up quite far away from where i needed to be <laughs> As everybody, <laughs> but exactly. you turned around, yeah. checking. Keep coming back. Yeah, that's checking. Yeah. So I think that's a nice uh, conclusion. Yeah. Keep checking, everybody. Yeah. Thank you very much, Sarah, for your time. It was a great pleasure. Oh, and for me as well. Always to sit with you. Yeah. For a few minutes and talk. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>